Hello, YouTube, fellow tankers, you my clanmates. You've arrived at King's Court Reviews for World of Tanks. Uh, I am Shrine King, and today we're going to be looking at the M4190. Basically, it's the Walker Bulldog that's a premium tier 8 German version of the American Bulldog. Uh, you see right there, it's the M4190MM. Uh, so this is a light tank. Uh, modeled directly after the um, the Bulldog. Uh, so for those that are new, I'm going to cover pros, cons, kind of like how it uh, compares to the other the other lights available, whether or not it's worth getting, um, and then kind of talk about like how to best play the tank uh, to get the best performance that you're most likely going to get out of the tank. So uh, starting out the door, uh, let's go ahead and talk about pros of this tank. So one, it is relatively fast. It can get up to a good speed, um, and it does have uh, decent maneuverability. Uh, but to me, it's kind of slow to get up to that speed. So its uh, initial, I guess, engine power to me is a little weak. So the other thing is it has a really good gun, and I do mean really good gun. The damage output on this thing is pretty exceptional when it comes to light tanks. Uh, other than that, that's that's really the gist of it. Um, cons of the tank. Uh, now bear in mind, this is kind of like just from my review and my understanding of the tank. Um, so there are people that believe this to be like one of the best tanks out there. Uh, and there is a certain reason to why, and I'll explain that. Uh, but so bear that in mind when you're hearing these cons. So one, uh, as I mentioned, to me, I don't feel the tank gets up to speed quick enough. Uh, it makes it a little more complicated when trying to uh, get to certain locations relatively quickly uh, to potentially be a passive scout. So like here you'll see that I'm going to try to be a passive scout. It does work to a point, but one of my teammates had already spotted a lot of these, so it's not to my benefit. Uh, so. The catch is if you're trying to get closer to like front line to like, you know, maybe like a little farther out, uh, this is not the tank for that. Uh, it doesn't really perform that way uh, when trying to be a passive scout. That said, I don't feel like it's a really good passive scout anyway. So the next con is that its camo rating is actually relatively low and compared to a lot of the other um, uh, premium light tanks. Uh, so to give an example, I think fully decked out, I can get this thing up to like 33, 34, and that's with the camo net. Uh, whereas others, I can get up to 40, 45, uh, even almost 50, uh, and that seems pretty rough when you compare the, when you compare the two there. Uh, one thing it does have as a as a good uh, pro to it is that it actually has decent um, visual uh, like uh, eyes. So that's definitely worth uh, noting uh, but uh, technically when this thing was kind of as the big ideal there wasn't a lot of other options that had eyes uh, now that's not really true there are quite a few other tanks that actually have really good eyes uh, even the German uh, line itself has much better eyes in comparison so um, yeah I mean, I'm sorry, not much better. That there's there's a lot of lines now, uh, mediums, tank destroyers, lights, uh, that all have very similar, if not exactly the same, uh, view range. So that means it just lost to me one of its uh, larger benefits. So, um, all together, to me, it doesn't really play like a light, uh, to be honest. So when you measure these pros and you measure the cons. If, if you're kind of noting here, you'll notice I mentioned the gun's really good, the damage output's really good, the reload's really good. Those those are definitely like nice pros to it. Uh, aim time's not bad, right? And accuracy is pretty good. So like situations like here where you see that I'm I'm shooting and oh, I didn't get lucky. Um, it was a little rough there, but I mean that that is part of it. Uh, so the other thing is it has heat, and it's worth noting. Uh, heat is nice when trying to deal with some of the heavier tanks that actually uh, have no like spaced armor or anything like that. Um, making it very good for the penetration value, but at the same time, if you're shooting at targets and you hit like in the track or they have spaced armor or there's like buildings in the way or anything like that, um, 
or destructible items, I should say, because it's like buildings, cars, fences, anything. All of those get sucked up by heat, which that part is kind of, you know, sucky. But um, so is this tank really worth it? Uh, to me, personally, no. I, d I don't believe it to be true. Uh, there are a lot of people that will say differently. And again, I'm going to cover that uh, here in a bit. But if I were to give my two cents... Uh, now that the Rue uh, 251 has a variant basically that got released as a premium uh, for tier 8, that's the Hawk 30. I personally feel the Hawk 30 is a much better tank. Um, it has better camo. It has, uh, I think it has the same visual range. It has high, higher top speed. It has more uh, engine power to get up to that speed. It has a better gun, in my opinion. Um, the typical round on that one is uh, APCR and then you have uh, heat still as an option as well and it even gets special freaking high explosives which is also yeah it's just it's ridiculous uh, to me all around I feel like the Hawk 30 is just much better as of a tank uh, and it follows the the tank line style right so like if you're trying to get prepped or ready for what it would be like to be in the Rue um, and then moving on to the Rhyme Penzer Tell uh, that's that's the one I would go for, not this thing. This thing doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Now, that said, now here here comes the argument, right? So the argument is that this thing can pump out damage like nobody's business. You'll have amazing win eights, and you can get all sorts of credits, and it's, it's just awesome sauce. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, and you'll see right here, like I'm just gonna start pumping out some damage into this guy. And, you know, like I said, the gun's actually pretty pretty good. That said, uh. I'm a light. I intend to play as a light. I tend to play support, be a spotter, all that kind of stuff. I don't intend to be the guy who's, you know, working around flanks and trying to be a flanker and, you know, sitting all the way in the back by tank destroyers, as you can see over here, and just being that guy who's able to pump out damage like nobody's business. Now, in the event here, like you saw, I went passive and it didn't work out for me because I easily got spotted because this thing doesn't really have good camo. Um, and then in turn... Uh, you know, I started playing uh, farther in the back and started being more of a supportive, like, fighter tank, right? Now, that that model does work really well for this tank. If you want to be just a damage dealer, supportive tank to your team, that kind of stuff, not really being a light or, you know, a scout, I should say, um, then okay, that's what this tank is definitely really good for. So, as a review of comparison of lights to lights, uh, uh, more on the aspect of playing the role to be, you know, a spotter slash uh, assistant that most people expect out of them, I don't feel that this tank's really good for that. Uh, for that said, please bear in mind, people, if you are seeing people playing this tank, they are most likely not going to be your scout. They will be a, uh, you know, like uh, a butt whooping assault tank essentially <laughs> so just bear that in mind now going from there into like is it worth it well um again i would actually prefer to have the hawk 30 myself but is this tank uh, actually worth it yeah yeah I, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't be necessarily because if you play it to the style it's really designed for and you're really just playing it more as a damage dealer or an active scout uh, it's not bad. Uh, you can definitely pull in uh, quite a bit. Hopefully your team supports you, right? especially when you're active. Uh, but it can definitely pull in the credits and stuff like that. So that's definitely nice. If you're not, if and again, you know, because there's not a lot of options for Germany, it's really up to you. I again still highly emphasize that I feel that the Hawk 30 is a better tank altogether um, for those options, even the money side of it. So just kind of comp like it depends on your what you're really looking for what reviews you believe in so I, I can definitely see the value and say like yep it's still worth it and by the way you'll see here where I'm playing it as an active scout and there is a major difference in performance when going as like as an active scout against being a passive scout so um, getting that out of the way right how do you play this? And you'll notice I've already kind of given away a lot of it, right? So one, if you are going to be a scout, uh, you have to be an active scout. Um, passive just does not work, which is sad because they have the whole play your tank right kind of missions. And honestly, you will probably never really accomplish them on this tank. You got to get lucky. Um, 
so in the player tank right the whole prospect there is that you're trying to get into bushes far like pretty far into the uh, forward section um, and then be a scout just sitting in the bush waiting and spotting as many people as you can before they can possibly spot you um, that's really hard in this thing so I wouldn't I wouldn't focus on trying to do that mission in this tank if that's what you're doing uh, what I would do though is I would be an active scout most likely in the very beginning get a layout of the land which is kind of what you're seeing that I did here I started on the forest side now I'm kind of coming over I'm gonna try to spot over here to see real quick uh, and now that said I am a little more dangerous here because you know I'm kind of I don't do the active scout very often because the passive scout is more or less the, the what the missions for so that's what I've been kind of focusing on uh, but um, the trick here is I like for example there I actually went too far up uh, when I went around that uh, upper ridge there ridge line ahead of me uh, what I would have wanted to do is actually just get it to where just my cupola is coming up over it so like here you'll see I took my whole tank over that ridge and I shouldn't have done that I should have just got my cupola to where it could see and then stay on that ridge and then come right back down because I don't have to stay up there I just need to get up far enough to get it to where I can spot a line and then come right back down. So I did that wrong. Um, if you if you guys are looking to play this thing, or actually in any scout that you're being an active scout, that's the thing to keep in mind. You don't have to get the whole tank up there to spot stuff. You just need to get your cupola above the ridge so that it can see. Uh, and in case you you don't know, the cupola, if uh, which here I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to snipe this tank, which I'll probably never get a shot. Yeah. So the cupola on that right side of my my turret. Uh, you see this big freaking orbital thing just sitting like big hulking circle uh, sphere on top of there. So that's that's what I'm talking about when I say the cupola. It is where your commander is looking out of. So he'd be the one spotting. Now, there is another port that can be viewed from, which is uh, the driver's port. And it's the front of the tank on the hull. Uh, but you don't need that to actually spot. So uh, it helps when you're kind of sitting still or like if you're charging at stuff to be able to see that way. But you just, you just don't need it to actually do it. Um, now, as I mentioned, the whole combat scout thing. So one thing that this thing does do really well with is uh, for like that example, I was able to just auto lock, get in there, put a shot right into them. Uh, the accuracy and stuff like that on the move is pretty good. So it is able to do that pretty well. So... Play pretty active, um, and as I said, uh, once uh, the truth is, like this thing will do really well as a supportive tank. So let other people kind of take the front line, um, play as a backline support sniper, uh, but then also keep in mind your mobility, right? So you have that. now here. I'm I'm being very aggressive, and I don't need to be. Um, I have teammates that could have been for me, and I could have just been the gun to support them. Uh, so that's that's the part I'm talking about. Like this thing really excels at, uh, and I don't play it quite right, which is the I guess most of it's me being stubborn, right? So like, and I even have a teammate that is gonna go spot, right? So like, here's where I am taking up the chance to do it. So like, I'm staying far over, so that way I can hopefully stay hidden, and I'm gonna try to support him here. I probably should have rolled back farther, so that way I would have gotten the camo boost from like let's say that bush and that. But you'll see, I didn't actually get spotted, so that's okay. Uh, and then here, you know, doing the same thing. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Like, the guy came up there, and you'll see that I'm able to pen the tanks. I'm able, like, the gun is really good on this tank. So, damage potential, supporting potential, um, as a damage tank or assault tank is really good in this tank. So, that's, what, that's the style you want to play for when you're playing this tank. If you're looking to be or working on, let's say, those missions, um, such as the you know player tank right and do the spotting uh, spotter type missions where you're saying hey I need to get four people lit up with like me spotting them without being spotted at all uh, that is the stuff that you see where like people are gonna go and get into a bush and um, sit in that bush and spot uh, those conditions you want to do in a different tank right so that's the kind of tanks where you're looking at um, like ELC even 90s, right? Things like that. Uh, the AMX line is really good at it too because they're really fast and they have high camo rating. Um, so, again, I hope this kind of helps. Um, now, for the, the commentary side, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, this match does go through. We do end up winning. Um, I even left the results so you can kind of see how much money it makes. It definitely can make good money. Um, I wouldn't consider it as like one of the highest, right? Because the, the cost per shell 
is not like the lowest. That's actually one of the things that I've been looking into. And I might actually release like a little cheat sheet list of which ones really do bring in the money, but I'm pretty sure someone's already got it out there. So if you're curious on which premiums to play to make money per per round, that's that's a list you'd probably just look up and it would tell you. And it's basically going to tell you uh, what the rate of the tank was uh, and then also what's the cost per shell and then uh, balance that out to say where that mo like the amount of money is so anyway I hope that helps um, please again let me know what your thoughts like subscribe if you like this stuff uh, let me know if you th there's other information that you want me to present and I will catch you on my next video thank you so much again for watching